what it do surprise shoddy crew i tried to say it a little bit slower and clearer for our new surprise shoddy crew um i'm glad y'all here and y'all have subscribed i'm not gonna hold you we are going a little off script this morning i have two words written down but that's not what we're doing so um i just pray that this meets you where you're at and it humbles you it, I think for some, it's going to be a ton of insight and confirmation, but it's supposed to humble us, okay? Um, I will argue I had already picked up on it this whole time. There's just never been a word, but it was confirmed and brought out during a bay talk. So the word is brought to you by the Holy Spirit, of course, but let's just say that the bay talk was also sponsoring it and there are four songs, at least lyrics from four different songs that have really been just you know, around me this week. I'm somebody where I have to pay attention to what I'm listening to. I do. Like, why do I keep playing that? Like, why all of a sudden I feel like listening to that? The four songs, Queen Naja, Bad Boy, and Pack Light. The heart posture you need to be in at the end of this video is Bad Boy, okay? Not Pack Light, okay? And then um, Kevin's Heart, J. Cole, we coming back to that again, Okay. And then difference is we're coming back to that again. Okay, so y'all just bear with me. I'm actually going to start this with the dream I had. Um, but I want to say something I told y'all on the live. Part of praying for increased discernment, um, I'm recognizing that it's turned up in the dreams now and also in my waking life. I recently had a dream where my kino spouse needed to get something with my debit card. Now, this is important because for one, this is a whole separate warning. Stop spending money you don't have. Okay. Stop spending money you don't have. That has nothing to do with kingdom spouses. Stop spending money you don't have. The reason I was able to later pick up on what God was saying is because even in a dream, I remember thinking like, why are we using my debit card? Because the debit card means like that's money I actually have versus a credit card, right? But we were using my debit card. Stick with me. He needed it to cover something, but who he was in a dream was not given like Bay's spirit. But I'm going to argue part of my discernment is knowing when it's different things that may afflict him in the flesh, things that he may need to be delivered from. So those are the things that I was seeing on him in the dream. And I was like, this is really, really weird. But I gave him the debit card for whatever the purchase is that he needed. The title of this word is Bay Paid the Price. Okay. Now, before we get into the relationship part that I know everybody love and be wanting, we still got to keep it real. Jesus paid the price. And that's one of the things that gets me fiery at church. You know, knowing the fact that he already knew what you were going to do. He already knew what mistakes you were going to make, what choices you were going to make. And he still died for you knowing that. Okay. Jesus paid a price that we could never pay. The payment for our sins was the precious life that he gave. So they paid the price, Jesus. Okay. And we got to remember that. And when you love your spouse from that place, you know, from the other videos we've made this week, the resurrecting power, the redeeming power, all of that, you have paid the price for them. And I already know, but one of the things in my life, I told y'all that I didn't have the the um, currency, like the faith currency for it, but he did, he paid for it. So this is kind of meeting us the opposite um, direction, the opposite place, okay? This is also gonna go back to the red bottoms word. Remember these expensive, these is red bottoms, these is bloody shoes. Do y'all remember that? If you haven't watched that word, go watch that, okay? Because they paid the price. We finna stomp it all out, okay? So let's get into these other parts of the word real quick. Um, I recognize that I've possessed the fear of, you know, if he see my darkness, if he see what I really struggle with, if he see the curses, if he see my demons, then he's not going to love me anymore. He's going to go away. For us to think that those men can't also feel like that, I think that that would be extremely naive of us. We are aware of different things that we've been fighting, different things we've been trying to work on, different things we may have really been serious about fighting before, but we could never do it. I'll tell y'all what, my kingdom spouse is a lot of motivation for me to really deaden a lot of these things, whether it be my personality traits, which again, those can be things on the bloodline.
Curses on the bloodline. I'm aware of that. Remember I told you I had a dream where I was talking to him crazy and then I saw a curse on the wall. Do y'all remember that? Some of that is personality. Some of that is characteristics and behavior that has continued to be passed down from generation to generation, which enabled them to stay in the mindsets that kept the generational curses on the bloodline. Okay, but I would be lying to y'all. I didn't tell y'all having my kingdom spouse in my life. Don't further check me, but give me motivation to change those things about me. Okay, so if I recognize that for myself as a woman, why would we not think that they don't think that as well? But when you're in a place of trying to run and trying to hide, you can think that you're hiding those things from your spouse. But if your spouse is really sitting with the Lord, you're not hiding nothing from God. Therefore, you're not hiding nothing from your spouse. So this is going to bring us to the lyrics. Okay. So in um, Pack Light, Queen Naja says, you can think you write all you want. I see through you just like water. And Pack Light is really about arguing and stuff so if y'all have found yourself in that place like you might um have to go and do you like y'all know the lyrics to the song you may have found yourselves in that place that's what i said don't stay in that place though the end of this our heart posture at the end of this word is supposed to be bad boy okay so you can think you write all you want i see through you just like water but we're learning that even though we see straight through that we're su still supposed to be humble even if we know they're wrong and they think they're right right we're still supposed to be humble, submit to their authority. But that's the that's the part from that song. You can think you write all you want. I see through you just like water. And that is supposed to further, all of this is supposed to further confirm to them that we sit with God concerning them. Okay. Let's A year going. ago, God gave me Kevin's heart. I reshared the video to the community post. And in that video, I was telling y'all, he was saying, brace yourself, be prepared. He's preparing our hearts to be ready to receive the things that they may have to tell us. And I was like, it can't be nothing too bad, God, because, I mean, you pretty much showed me everything anyways. That's how I be feeling. Like, what could it possibly be? One of the tactics is for them to get in a place to where they finally open up and they tell you things. Part of it is we're going to see if she really loves me. She's going to really stay. I'm going to show her this. Part of the tactic is the enemy beating them up and like, let's see if she still love you when she find out. Let's see, let's see if she still love you when she find out. And then us being in a place that we find out and we scared of that. Are you scared of your spouse's demons? Are you? Are you scared of any demon? Okay, so he really calling us on the carpet. We finna see how you finna move. Are you scared of what you may see? Are you scared of the things you may even interact with in your dream? I ain't never scared. What? I ain't, literally, I ain't never scared. Okay, so... Um, and that came up in a word this week too. I don't remember which one, but I was saying, I went, I'm not scared of my king of spouse demons. I'm not scared of my daddy's demons. I won't want nobody to be scared of my demons. I'm not scared of demons anymore. Period. Point blank. I'm not scared. Okay. So Kevin's heart, the end that he's saying is they tell me what's done in the dark will find a way to shine. I didn't did so much that when you see, you might go blind. God already showed me. And I'm not scared of your demons. Therefore, I'm not scared of your darkness. I'm not scared of what you may have been doing in the dark. I'm not scared of what thinks is hiding within you. Nothing going on with that man has ever been hiding. I've always been able to see it since I've sat with the Lord concerning it. Even when it's stuff and I'm like, it's not really masquerading. Because I know what is straight up not him. But some dreams, it's like, no, he think like this though, God, right? Those dreams used to discourage me. And now being in a place to where I know there is nothing that me or him have to overcome or get delivered from that's too big for God. I shouldn't be fearful. Oh, God, what he's struggling with is too much. Too much for who? Jesus already paid the price. Too much for who? And I paid the price to walk in these red bottoms. That's something that we finna stomp it out. Like too much for who? If you coming from that place, you not finna fight effectively. Are you scared of your spouse's demons? Are you scared? And you don't need to be scared. And are you still gonna love them when you find out different things, when you hear different things, when the stuff that might've been bad is confirmed to you? Are you still going to love them and receive them and help them fight? He wants you to run off scared, whether it be in your own bloodline, something that's in theirs or something that they're dealing with. The enemy is hoping that you see it. You encountered it and, and you, oh, oh, uh-uh. We're not doing that. We are not doing that. I'm, I'm here to tell y'all this morning. We are not doing that. Okay? I'm not scared. And sometimes when you hear the enemy speaking through your spouse, it's talking to you crazy to make you back off, run away from the fight. No. 
No, absolutely not. I don't care if this is a video you got to hear every day. We are not scared. That's why all these words have been coming in the way that they have. Let them marinate. Let them be made true in your heart. We're not scared. God is bigger. But when you find out what's done in the dark or how much they did or have done or currently doing, it don't matter. You're not going to go blind because you were already hip. God sees in the dark and you can't go blind when you know the truth. You see straight through it. God is bigger and Jesus already paid the price for this. And I already went through the process. Some of it is stuff you might have already been delivered from. What am I scared for if I've already been delivered from those spirits? Why would I be scared? I know I got power and authority over it. Why would I be scared? You need to be scared of me, right? Ain't no way you're going to be me and God. Ain't no way. So indifference is, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm really, I'm, I'm really hyped. <sighs> indifference is with dirt because this is the part that always kept coming up. Don't let her see the other side. I be with the demons. It don't matter how much a man thinks or a woman thinks they're not showing you the darkness or the other side. If God has connected you to them, you can think you running and hiding. You can think they not seeing it and not seeing the other side, not the demons. All you want. But again, I see through you just like water. It don't matter that you're not telling me. Nine times out of ten, I dreamt it already. Nine times out of ten, I already seen it. Or God was speaking to me about it. So it don't matter if you think you're not letting me see the other side. I'm aware of the other side. I, I'm aware of what demonic strongholds are over you or trying to keep you. And part of it is really like the shame and guilt. That's how we know like, um, you know, like it's hard to come back to Jesus because it's like we, we feel those feelings. That is a part of it with your spouse. But if you're not scared, what they got to be scared for? Let's fight it. Let's stomp it out. I already paid the price. Literally, I was already delivered from these things. I'm not scared of them. Again, God sent her. We see in the dark because God sees in the dark. Now, some of these men, women, you may have a spouse who truly sees in the dark. I see in the dark. So there's nothing going on in the dark concerning my life that I am not aware of. Nothing. And for some of them, they're realizing that. I've been knew that. You've been worried and scared about that. I've been knew that. I've been knew we was up against that. That's not breaking news to me, but the devil tries to keep them from us away from the light, thinking that it's going to expose all this bad stuff. No, light, love, true. Already see in the dark because God sees in the dark. I'm already aware of that. But this is when he's going to test you as a wife. Are you going to run away from that? Do you know your power and authority? Are you going to fight in prayer? Are you still going to stand? Or are you going to be scared of what they got going on? Because in bad boy, okay, this is how we're going to end it. You don't got to worry. I won't judge you from your past. Shoot, I'm not going to judge your current. Let's keep it a buck. All right. And if something were to go down in the future, I'm not going to judge you for that neither. That's real love. But she says, you don't got to worry. I won't judge you from your past. And if that's being highlighted to me, that means that some of them are worrying. And it's a test. And we know we try to push people away and self-sabotage and stuff. And we feel like we're not worthy. Not worthy of the love. Not worthy of the blessing. At some point, we really got to come above all of this. Because what the devil be talking about is nonsense. Y'all's human nature that's not above God. So when you sit with God and we have the perspective of God, we need to move from that place of victory. Because it's already won when you up here and this it's already won. I see it all. That's the difference. All right. Queen Naja also says in Pack Light, just one on one, let you do what let you do what you want, but she'll that'll never be me. Because it is generational curses. The enemy does link us to people, disguising it as love so that we can continue to move with different generational curses and stuff on the bloodline. But the woman God has sent you, the man that God has sent you, you ain't never going to just be able to do what you want because you're going to feel God in them. It's going to be accountability. It's going to be a standard. It's going to be a godly expectation. Just want someone, let you do what you want, and that'll never be me. Never. So that might be how y'all's arguments lately have sounded. Pack light. If you don't get your act together, you might have to pack light and do you, right? But that's not where we're supposed to stay. 
It's bad boy. I'm going to be the one to plant the I'm seed. I'm going to be the one to plant the seed in you. The people that the enemy sent, they're not planting seeds of newness and growth. It's to stay so that the demons can stay hidden on the bloodline. Look at these men getting these women who can see in the dark and ain't nothing hiding over here. That's part of the separation. What did we say? Like when... uh. When, when when the separation happens, but I'm going to send my Holy Spirit and that's going to expose and reveal and all of those things. Well, God, how does she see all that? How does she know all that? And these other ones don't know that. Same with my spouse. God, why are you showing him that? You ain't never showed nobody else that. You ain't never really called me on the carpet for that with no other relationship. You might have told me like, yeah, that's kind of wrong. But with him, it really is like a put up or shut up type of thing. You either going to change or you not. Well, help me change y'all, right? Because I know my spouse is not scared of me. The same way I'm not scared of him. He is not scared of me. The other ones, they might have been a little scared of me. My spouse is not scared of me. You are equipped for your spouse's battle within their bloodline, within themselves. You are equipped. That's what the difference is. It don't matter how much you try to run and hide. You can't run and hide from God. Therefore, you cannot run and hide from your spouse. I know it's kind of scary, but I think this gives a lot of prayer points. So make sure that when y'all pray, it's levels to this. You pray that they would surrender while you're also simultaneously demanding, declaring, decreeing, commanding that different things break off of them. And you keep praying that they stay in the right heart posture and that you would stay brave and courageous in your fight and that nothing would deter you from loving them. Nothing. Nothing. I don't care what you did. Ultimately, praying that they would receive unconditional love from heaven and understand their worth. All the stuff I know I've done, all the ways I know I've moved. Why would God bless me with this spouse? Because he loves you that much. And he ordained, appointed that person as your spouse before you did what you wanted to do. Before you made different decisions. Before you hurt them. Whatever it is. Before the mistakes you made. While we were yet sinners, Jesus died. Okay, that, I feel like that should just be the motto for marriage at this point, right? Like, that's the one. So, I love y'all. I pray this finds you where you're at, but does not leave you there, okay? Like, you can go listen to all the songs, all the little parts I reference, but at the end of the day, bad boy is the right heart posture, Okay? I never really had a bad boy. You know, I've always been a good girl. And even in that, how his love for her and how he there for her bosses her up, teaches her how to hold her own, all of those things. Okay, very confirming of a lot of the words. But know that you paid the price. You were already delivered. So you can help them. I was like, why is he trying to charge this to my car? That's why. I already paid the price. I've been delivered from those things. And I can pray from that awareness and authority i know my authority over those things and i have that authority through jesus christ big bay already paid the price death cannot hold you down you are the risen king seated in majesty you pray from that place you play from victory. Don't let the devil run you off from your spouse out of fear or nothing. And if you're struggling with that, you need to really boss up in the spirit. You need to get mighty in the spirit, okay? Guns blazing. We coming out swinging all 2023.